You know, the temperatures are getting uh, a little bit cooler. You might want to try with a little bit of experimentation in the kitchen. Please welcome Claire Tansy from Chatelaine Magazine. You know, I call it experimentation because a lot of people think curry, which we're going to be making right now, <laughs> mm -hmm. and they think, oh my gosh, this is full of flavor. Yes. You know, I don't know Tick. if my young kids are going to want to eat curry. Heaven forbid. Yeah, heaven forbid mm -hmm. we give them a little bit of spice yes. and flavor short, in their short dinner. Short anecdote. Okay. Two nights ago, we're sitting at the family table. I have a two and a half year old, as you may know. Yeah. Uh, Michael and I, my partner and I, are having leftover Thai chicken curry that I made the night before. Yeah. Kind of spicy, lots of lime, lots of fish sauce, mm. lots of like little. Yeah. I had some uh, shepherd's pie for Thomas, little little Thomas man. You know, good old fashioned shepherd's pie. Can't yeah. go wrong with that. He says, "No pie, want that." Oh, he, he wanted, wanted the, curry. the curry, of course, with he the does. fish sauce and the spices. So, yeah. if a two and a half year old is game. Do it. Do it. Absolutely. You yeah. know, introduce them to as many flavors as you can mm. at the young age because mm. it's great for them to experience and expand their palate. Indeed. And if right? you're loving it, yeah. chances are. They will love it too. Right? They might it's love it too. Monkey monkey do. Yeah, I yes. know, I know. It seems all often like the harder you want them to love something though. They're going to hate it. Oh yeah. Yeah. I couldn't oh, wait yeah. until my children got into sushi because you know what? It's easy. <laughs> exactly. I can order sushi now. We don't have to get a burger and fry. So oh, I really nice. wanted them to like sushi and they hated it of course for many years okay. and now they like the sushi. Well, that's a happy story. Because I eased off, that's right? A happy story. Exactly. All right, so let's no make pressure. our chicken curry. Okay, no pressure here. So chicken curry, now this is a really perfectly classic chicken curry. Okay. And you might think, okay, I'm gonna need 19 spices and four hours and a lot of technique and a lesson. Right. Not correct. This is all you need here. That's it. And we're gonna do we're gonna do it so we're calling it restaurant style. So fancy Indian restaurant style, which yeah. actually just means instead of pouring the sauce on top of the chicken, you put the chicken on top of the sauce. That is very So fancy. you end up with this lovely, absolutely restaurant quality, stunning dish, but it's really, really easy. Okay. So we're doing chicken. Yeah. Um, and we decided to do these are called chicken supreme. So they still have the little winglet on them. Mm -hmm. There's bone in, skin on, which has a lot more flavor. Yeah. Um, and the little the little supreme is not necessary but it's super fun and if you if you're the type of person who loves to eat the wing off a roast chicken yeah oh you're gonna love this because it's got all that delicious wing meat on there so it's like really a really good baby drumstick exactly your kid will love that too exactly those start in the pan then you just finish them in the oven that yeah. makes they're gonna be juicy and finishing them in the oven uh, uh, like just makes chicken so so nice and juicy and then you know it's also cooked all the way through because you know, <laughs> it's helpful it's helpful <laughs> it is helpful right when you pan sear like there's always this issue know, is like, it cooked all the way through do or I not poke it? Do I what do I do? So, meanwhile, I'm going to take that same pan and I'm going to make a really simple curry. And I actually okay. wanted to make this to show you just how simple it is to make a curry. Because I know I've been victim of this. I think, oh, curry takes so many spices. Yeah. It really doesn't. So onion, and then we're going to kind of speed this up in the magical world here. That's ginger and garlic. Okay. Really simply chopped. Good and combo. this is all we need. And so what have you got in there? Garam masala, yeah. which is, you just buy it already mixed up like that. Yeah. A little bit of cumin, a little bit of turmeric. All right. A little bit of sugar. Oh, and that's sugar. Yeah, a little bit of sugar because okay. um, this, this curry is, oh, I love it. I just love it so much. But it's got that little hint of sweetness mm -hmm. to really complement the exoticness of the spices. Yeah. And then the richness of the garlic and the ginger and the onion. Anyway. It's a I, good combo. I, you know how I love curry. Curry is my, my favorite comfort food, so i is it your go-to, would you say? It's my go-to. It's your go-to. If I'm absolutely out of ideas, I make curry. You make curry. Good yeah. for you. Because yeah, that's it's how easy. easy it is. It's easy. So once that cooks down a little bit, I'm going to add this entire huge bucket of I'll tomatoes. You, you need. I need your strong arms. Ah. I know that looks like one million tomatoes. That's only four. Look that at how healthy tomatoes. this is. I guess they're just diced up so finely. Just, that's why it looks like They're so just much. chopped up. And it, you don't even have to do them very evenly because we're going to blitz them in the end. Right. Great way to use up all those extra tomatoes that might be in your Smart. garden just at the sort of the end of the season as we're getting there. Mm -hmm. And that cooks down. And then you put it all in the blender or the bl blitz it. And you have this. And so you didn't add any cream into that? You take a little couple of mouthfuls of sour cream. Yeah. And that's all you need. Okay. So I'm going to just stir in this little tiny bit of sour cream. I'm actually going to get you to do it so that I, you know, have, you don't I, get in I, trouble. I, I didn't see it. <laughs> I, it wasn't me. Um, okay, so, so this really, is what gives that it, is it. So that little it thickens bit of cream. It, it thickens it up and it gives it a lusciousness that it's going to make you think that you're at the best Indian restaurant in the city. Okay. Now just to go with this because I am a huge fan of the chickpea. I think you're also a fan of the chickpea. I love the chickpea. It's so really good for you. Indeed. 
a couple of chickpeas, a little bit of olive oil, a little bit of coriander, some salt. Roast these in the oven because the oven's already on because you got yeah. the chicken in there. Swirl those around and you roast them up and they become crispy chickpeas. Oh, nice. Which is either like your appetizer or you can eat them on the side along with. So you're getting your legumes and your chicken and your curry and. Yes. Pair it up with a nice glass of Gewürztraminer. Oh, this your toddler will love that. He really does. <laughs> this is all part of Chatelaine. It's perfect with her curry. <laughs> doing a new wine page, wine pairing page, and this yes. is the recipe that we developed to go with Gewürztraminer. You know what? I love that you are pairing up the wines. I mean, a lot of us think it's a science, and it's not. It's really about what you like. But then again, on the other hand, yes. we like the guidance. Exactly. So you know exactly what you you need to go, to buy to go and along on this with page, the meal. We're keeping it super simple. Yeah. So if it's curry, just Gewürztraminer. Whether you're in a restaurant, whether you're at home, doesn't matter. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay, we're putting the recipe for both of those things on our website. That's cityline.ca. Thank you so much for Always that. Always a pleasure.